Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a long overdue video on the 1100 that I use in all my three gun videos. If you've seen the Texas multi-gun videos in particular, this is the, the shotgun that I'm using for the shotgun stages. It's a Remington 1100. Um, 1100s have been around for a long time. It's really, the 1100s really aren't that hot a ticket today in the three gun competition world. Uh, Benelli's and a few others have seemed to be taking the lead on this, but I like the 1100. Um, this one works for me. It's tried and true in my case, so I'm pretty happy with it and I really don't see the need to upgrade. Plus, with the amount of three gun that I shoot, I really can't justify going out and spending a ton of money on a new shotgun. Um, this one here is, I've made a few modifications to it. When I bought it, it was just plain stock, $1,100, maybe $300 when I first bought it. But there's a few things I needed to do in order to make it race ready, if you will. The main one was to get an oversized charging handle. Um, the one that comes with it, I have it sitting right here, is just this little stock thing right here. And if your gun ever does jam, this is a whole lot easier to grab a hold of to rack that slide than this right here. I mean, this just sticks right in like so. It's just not much to grab a hold of. So this tactical uh, charging handle from Choate, I'll put a link in the description for it, it is a must, I think, for the shotguns. Um, going to the 1100 again, the loading gate. Getting these suckers to load <clears throat> can, uh, when shoot, well, let's step back for a minute. When shooting, shooting three gun competition, uh, the thing that separates you from the rest is how fast can you load your th your shotgun. So anything you can do to help speed that up is going to help you. And that goes for the speed loaders on your belt, which I'll do a video on those, uh, post that a little later on this. But mainly this loading gate right here can be tough. On the 1100, there's a silver button that sits right about here and you have to depress this first before you can get the gate to go down and then actually load your, your bullet. This is the, the silver gate. It mounts right about here. So really that's not much of a target for you to take your shotgun shell and depress to get the gate down to slide the bullet into the chamber. So I've replaced this tiny little target, if you will, with the easy loader gate. And I'll put a link to that as well down in this description. And this basically uh, increases the surface area of that little button and allows you to hit anywhere on this gate and to make the loading gate depress and therefore gets it to load faster. Okay, so aside from having the loading gate and the oversized charging handle, if you really want to be competitive in three gun, you're going to need to put an extension tube on your shotgun. Now, a typical shotgun holds four in the tube, which is right underneath the uh, foregrip here, and it ends right about here. So you get four in the tube and one in the chamber, so five rounds total. Now, I've got an extension tube on here that gives me an additional four rounds. So I can put eight in the tube and one in the chamber. That'll give me nine. And then this is going to put me in the uh, tactical or limited division, however you want to think about it. Open is a whole different animal. I don't even want to go into that because it's it, the rules are just so weird. Uh, so we're just going to stick with this particular uh, gun and this division that I'm shooting here. So you need an extension tube on it. So an extension tube, oversized charging handle, and the loading gate. And with these things right here, you can get your 1100 up to speed and, and have some fun and be somewhat competitive with everybody else. Like I said, the main thing about shotguns is how fast can you load it. And this gate, for example, to load it, you know, I can hit it anywhere on here with my shotgun shell and it just goes right in. Now with the 1100, with nothing in the chamber, this easy loading gate, you see how it sticks down like so? Um, with nothing in the chamber, you rack the slide, you notice it stays back and there's the round that I just put in. So in my videos, you might see me rack the slide and tap the bottom with my hand. So if I pop it right here, it just chambered that round. And then you can sit here and load some more, some more rounds to it. And as you shoot it, it ejects and pops right out. So 
In addition to these other things which are nice but you don't really need them, I have a side saddle right here and I'll put some slugs on here. Uh, sometimes when you have a stage that requires slugs, uh, it's nice to keep those slugs separated from birdshot because you can get in trouble if you shoot a uh, slug on a birdshot target. You'll damage the steel or it's too close and it could pose a ricochet, a safety hazard, and you get disqualified for it. So I like to keep my slugs separate from the birdshot. So I put, usually put them on the side saddle here. Now when you put these side saddles on, you'll notice here on the side of the receiver there are some uh, Allen heads. Originally it was just these little friction pins held in place and you just pop those out. It removes the entire action and the, the trigger and the gate and everything comes out with these two pins right here. When I bought the side saddle, it came with these two screws right here. And they're basically, they, they take the position or they take the place of the pins where you push them in right here and then they screw in to the side of the side saddle right here. When you put a side saddle on your gun or anything mounted to the side like maybe a scope mount or something, uh, mine's worked loose right now, so this is not typical for it to actually be wiggling around. Make sure you don't torque these down too much with your wrench. If you get them too tight, it actually squeezes, at least on my gun, it'll squeeze the receiver down to where the gun won't cycle properly when it, uh, when it fires. It puts a little tension on this metal right here and it just will not cycle. So take that into, uh, into consideration when putting these on here. The next thing I've done is I've put an oversized safety on it. Now I'm right-handed and you know most safeties, it's a right-handed world, sorry sorry guys about being lefties and all. Um, putting this on safety, you don't see the red indicator, but this is the uh, safety that I removed. So on fire, it would be, you would see the red on this side right here. So on safe, it would be st stuck this way. Notice how small the head that you would push. If you wanted to push fire, you'd press from this side that way. It would be over here. Well, see how large that button is? It's an oversized safety. And what that does for me being right-handed is if I forget to take my gun off safety, my finger rests right here on the outside of the trigger guard. And all I need to do is reach for that trigger and my finger almost automatically presses the safety off. So this is a nice feature if you forget to take your safety off and you, you usually start the stages with your gun on safe. So that'll save you some little bit of a time and uh, that hesitation will kill in the competition world. Um, for the most part, uh, looking at sights, I, the sights came with this barrel. I bought this barrel aftermarket. I believe it's about a 21 inch and it has the, uh, the chokes that you can switch out. I'm not sure exactly what this one is. It just came with the barrel I bought and I ran with it and it seemed to work just fine. It came with rifle sights, but I have really no issues with the, just the bead on the sights. In fact, I'm going to put this, this stock 26 inch barrel, I think it's 26 inches, uh, that came with the 1100 because we're going to go bird hunting here uh, pretty soon. So I, I want to get it up to snuff for bird hunting. There's a few legalities. Uh, for bird hunting. And I'll post those videos on uh, Texas Native if I actually get to go bird hunting. So I'm going to take this apart and switch these barrels out. So let's do that right now. So I'm retiring the gun for the three gun right now. I have a barrel band at the end which is really not necessary. I just thought it was kind of cool and I picked it up somewhere for next to nothing. So I'm going to take that off. And then to take off the uh, extension tube. It's just kind of on their finger tight. If anything, that barrel band does keep the extension tube from coming loose. There's a spring under tension, so you want to be careful with that. And then we'll pull this off. Now when you buy the extension tubes, they, they will come with a spring. And the spring is quite longer than the stock spring. The stock spring here is with on the green plastic tube, so you notice it's it's a little longer than the other one, and the coils are uh, spaced out a lot more on the on the stock one. So I'm going to take my extension tube and my spring, toss that aside. Now inside here, I may not fall out. There it is. This is the follower. This is what you see when you press down on the gate back here. You'll see the little button. Um, you can buy these aftermarket followers that are addition other colors like maybe yellow or pink or red or something and that allows you to look at the gun and sight take a look in here and see oh I see red or pink or whatever that means my gun I have no more bullets in the chamber or in the tube 
I didn't really bother switching out anything like that because I, I like to count when I'm doing uh, three gun. Count my rounds if I can. So I'm gonna take this setter right here for the moment. For the 1100, we'll take off the stock. It just slides right off. We'll set this aside. Now here's the, uh, the barrel comes off pretty easy. I like to take the action, lock it open. That'll allow you to take the barrel off pretty easy. It's a, it extends into the action like so. So I'm gonna pull that off. This is where, if you were gonna clean your gun, this is about the amount that you would do. Okay, when I pulled off my barrel, I pulled the, the gas ring came off the barrel. So I'm gonna pull that out here. It usually doesn't stay in there. So here's our gas rings and our O-ring. Most of your problems with uh, cycling is going to be that O-ring. And I posted a video on that on, on uh, my gun not cycling one of the matches. So we can wipe this stuff down right here, keep this clean, replace your O-ring. If it gets dried and cracked, you know, get, get a new one in there. So I'm going to put this back on the gun where it belongs. And then, once we get that done, we'll take our new barrel. We're going to slide it in the action. Like so. And we'll take our stock and slide it on. And take our follower put it in. Now with the way the law is here in Texas, um, I'm only allowed three sh three shells in a gun for bird hunting. So I'm going to use something called a plug and the plug takes up the space. Remember the tube holds four rounds. The plug is going to take up the space of t the length of two rounds. And so that gives me a blank basically and then two rounds in the tube and one in the chamber. There's your, your three. So you see a lot of uh, videos of uh, people shooting maybe on the on TV the hunting channels where they're using double barrel shotguns over and unders because you know two is two is enough you know but three we can get away with three using a pump or a, or a semi-auto in this case so I'm going to use something called a plug and basically the plug you just take it stick it in like so and there's a retainer that holds the spring in place but I've lost it so I'm just gonna use this the screw on cap and this is the cap that came with the with the 1100 and it's just gonna screw on and hold the uh, foregrip in place so there we go so now I can close the bolt and everything's gonna cycle just fine I'm gonna leave the side saddle on I'm not gonna bother with taking it off I might look a little dorky out there with a bunch of bird hunters, but oh well, that's, you know, I'm, at least I'm not going to go out there with a tactical setup like I, like I had here before. But anyways, this is the 1100 that I use and how I use it. Uh, be sure and check out the 2012 uh, Texas multi-gun videos and the other multi-gun videos that I've posted. I'll have a bunch of playlists on all these videos if you want to see, and the more recent videos that I've posted on competition shooting, I'll do a walkthrough of the stage so you, can actually, so you can actually see what I'm going to shoot and how I plan to shoot it. Well, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews. Thanks.